Hello guys, welcome to Visor Down, my name is Alex and we're in Scotland, we're in Tongue at the moment and Honda have brought us here to do the NC500 or the North Coast 500 Tour and basically we're going to be riding these, the CB500F, CBR500R and the CB500X, they've all been updated for 2022 and we've been riding them around at least for now for the first day but we've got three days to do the entire route and see how these fare. We are here in Inverness. We've just completed our three day tour of the NC500. And first of all, what an incredible route this is. It's something that basically covers the entire coast of Scotland and you get not only some brilliant roads, but just some absolutely unreal scenery. You do have to put up with a bit of Scottish weather, mind, but that's just all part of the fun, isn't it? You get to experience your bike in all sorts of terrains and weathers and you have a great laugh doing it. What we've been riding for the last three days is the CB500F, the CBR500R, and the CB500X. They're basically all gonna be the 500cc or thereabouts from Honda that are banging in the middle of the A2 market. So they're gonna be 47 brake horsepower from the parallel twin. And what that gives you is a really smooth, confidence-inspiring ride tailored to what you need. So if you're looking for a naked bike, a sports bike, an adventure bike, and not forgetting the CMX Rebel, which is the 500, really popular with those who are looking for more of a cruiser and custom style. Shared across the three 2022 CB motorcycles, or four if you count the 2020 Rebel, is the 471cc parallel twin motor. Liquid cooled, four stroke and eight valves, the twin is a high revving and energetic power plant with all new fuel injection settings for 2022, said to give improved feel and power at the low to mid range revs. Now with nigh on 47 brake horsepower at 8,600 revs and 43 newton meters or 31 foot pounds at six and a half revs, not much can be improved on in the way of brake horsepower without taking this out of the A2 compliant market out of the box. So improvements to the fueling is the next best option. Loads of manufacturers are doing this in a Euro 5 world and of course Honda are keen to keep a hold of their 500cc segment. So for Honda in 2022, new fueling and weight reduction as well as altering the weight biases are order of the day and this recipe builds on a successive formula keeping the variety of different riding styles compatible with the same engine. A few more bits of spec for the engine nerds amongst you. We have a 67mm bore and a 66.8mm stroke, 10.7 to 1 fuel compression ratio and an indicated 75 miles per gallon figure achieved on roads where we were spanking it and these bikes certainly enjoy a good spanking. Wait, what am I saying? Anyway, haven't reviewed the CB500X previously on the Visor Down channel. Check it out if you haven't already. We felt the throttle could be a victim of a bit of twitchiness at low revs, and that does seem to be all but eliminated with these updated settings from my time on the 2022 model. And continuing the legacy of a tried and tested formula, the CB enjoys an accessible, frugal, and ultimately fun engine character. Plenty of big bike feel and dynamics, especially for a six foot free rider, but as it's mid range, nothing that will blow your socks off. Top power is not sitting in the unusable end for the road as some bigger bikes do fall victim of. Plus, for a country of ongoing fuel dramas, frugal power is the next best thing. And looking down at the speedo, knowing you won't lose your license is always a treat. Power delivery is smooth, both throttle application and the power to the rear wheel. And this unit is just as happy sitting at 60 miles an hour whilst you admire the spectacular Scottish scenery as it is when you're revving its nuts off at full tuck. Now remember that a 471cc unit will have its limitations, but you feel like a proper hero when you're at full tuck and full pin, looking at tying together successive corners and feel like you're really getting everything out that you can of this motor. Toyota, this is the best sports bike on the planet. I think it's like a little baby Fireblade and it really does not disappoint at all. It's got a 496 or thereabouts CC parallel twin and it puts out 47 brake horsepower with a nice flat torque curve. So if you're in any of those six gears, it just does the job. It will get to 100, sit there happily. You've got clip-on bars and you're in a really nice sporty position got new Showa 41mm big piston forks and they are exceptional. They keep you in place on the road really well, soak up any bumps, lumps, uneven terrain 
and mid corner they give you a lot of feedback and feel so if you need to put any power down no problem at all also new for 2022 are radially mounted nissin discs four caliper and the brake feel on these are really really direct instant and they don't bite but they put power on or take power away very well the brakes and suspension alone i think are well worth considering a few other bits are updated is lighter wheels a lighter swing arm but one of the big updates as well for me is the updated fuel injection and basically this will give a bit more low to mid range feel and a bit smoother power output when you're asking for a little bit more go in the low gears the throttle doesn't feel catchy at all it feels really smooth and direct and yeah of course it's 500 cc so you're not going to be you know overtaking in sick when you're sitting at 30 miles an hour because you need to shift down for that but luckily the gear shifts are really light feather light it's a very good looking bike i think you'll agree and as a six foot three rider i'm always a bit cautious of sports bikes in general but especially these sort of mid-sized ones because i think i'm just not going to fit but i'm happy to say i do my legs do get a little bit cramped but that's to be expected and you just kick a leg out like you're doing a little jig goes away instantly right that's it nc 500 everyone needs to do it i mean look come on come on tell me that this is not just breathtaking i don't care what you're doing <laughs> stop whatever you're doing get on your bike right now and get to scotland in front of me is the 2022 honda cb 500x the adventure crosser with new updates including an absolutely stunning colorway it sort of goes from black up to green at the top and i really like what they've done there also new is a new led light pattern gives you better visibility out on the road make sure you can be seen and also see a lot more also new is 41 mil big piston shower forks with quite a lot of travel and a nice amount of ground clearance so if you take this off-road you will not be disappointed at all you've got new twin discs at the front with the nissin two pot calipers and these are axially mounted <laughs> to really pronounce it that. basically this means that you've got a little bit more free play before the instant bike comes on and because of these forks with more travel if you're taking these off-road you don't want a lot of dive you want to have a bit of free play the brakes are really good they do not disappoint and they come on nigh on instantly they've adjusted that for the new model it also now has a 19 inch front wheel with a lighter spoke design the engine itself still puts out 47 brake horsepower meaning it's a2 out of the box but they have adjusted the fuel injection settings and that basically means that it's now got a smoother and stronger low to mid-range output very nice looking bike fits me like a dream and it just handles superbly off the road and on the road dash is nice and visible and clear and just, just it distinguishes itself as a lovely little option for someone who may be coming into the a2 market or just wanting an easy going ride so if you're looking for something to ride on your a2 license or you're looking to downplay from a bigger bike and have something that's very easy going but still exceptionally capable I'd certainly take this one out for a test ride. Honda have done very well honing this CB500 range. And I think the CB500X is beneficiary to quite a number of these updates that perfect what was otherwise a really good little bike anyway. Oh my. So, you know, when you're riding along, you have random thoughts, don't you? Oh, look at them sheep. Hey guys. One of the thoughts that I've had here is this, I wonder why other manufacturers don't do the same as Honda do here. The formula is kept relatively similar between the three models of bikes, if not four, if you consider the Rebel as part of the trio. They have the same parallel twin, same motor, same characteristics and the same sort of philosophy behind them all. 
But then you consider what you can do with each of them and how they're all tweaked to be somewhat similar yet somewhat different. In front of you is the 2022 Honda CB500F. It's the naked edition of the CB500 range. So first up, new headlight pattern and new little visibility lights are always on. Work really nicely, very visible in your rear view mirror from the guys that were riding behind. Next up is the 41mm Showa Big Piston Forks. A massive, massive, massive upgrade in my opinion. These forks really do a job and they feel so poised and you just feel so in control when you're riding along with these pistons. That's a big tick in the box of 2022 updates. Next up, dual disc setup. Nissan calipers, these ones are mounted radially. You've got lighter wheels, so unsprung weight is lighter and that basically improves the handling on the road. Whilst we're at the front as well, the Michelin Road 5 tyres that we were using, very, very grippy, especially in the rain, and especially in Scotland where that happened a few times. Next up in the engine is an adjusted fuel injection. And basically, speaking to the Honda guys, they said that the fueling has been altered a little bit for the low and mid range. They haven't adjusted the 47 brake horsepower limit, of course, so that it's A2 compliant out of the box. But what they have done is adjust the sort of low and mid uh, range torque. So it feels a lot stronger when you're sitting at low revs and that really is quite a big improvement. Moving to the rear, you've got a lighter swing arm and you've got a single disc at the rear. The exhaust, I've got to say, probably sounds the nicest out of the three that we were riding. It just has a really nice sort of burble to it and it sounds very, very good indeed. Bit of a scaffolding pole here at the end, but that's standard stuff. And it doesn't look too bad in my opinion, they've uh, styled it out. The yellow colorway really grew on me, I've got to say. Uh, when I saw it first, I was like, I don't really like that yellow, but it actually looks really nice, sort of Street Fighter Bumblebee-esque, if you're a Transformers fan anyway. We had a little tank bags mounted on, and there's a comfort pack accessories on these ones. So you've got a screen, you've got heated grips, and a few other little bits and pieces here and there. But the CB500F is a lovely little machine to ride, I've got to say. It feels so poised on the road, and you just really can chuck this around very comfortable to ride at speed and if you go and say 60 70 80 90 100 it'll do it and it'll do it happily if you recognize this from the visor download dog adventure then let us know in the comments anyway cb500f is a classic like learner's bike really it's an a2 bike but it also does it all it's so easy to ride you can flick it around like nothing else and it sounds really nice it's a two into one exhaust system and it just has such a lovely little burble to it. Really surprised me. The clutch is like feather light. And in all honesty, the tiny little adjustments they've made have really sharpened this CB500F into something that's quite impressive so far. The weight distribution is near 50-50 now. Basically what they've been trying to do is by lightening the swing arm, lightening the wheels, just in the fuel ignition. They've just sort of been looking at those re refinements. Oh, look at this little photo opportunity on the bridge. Impromptu. Yes. Bang it. Have some of that. That sounds beautiful as well. So we've been riding all three of these over the last few days. Day one, I was riding the CBF and the CMX Rebel. Day two, I was on the CB500X and the CBR500R. And then day three was a bit of all of them. Which one was my favorite? I don't really know, to be honest, because I fit the 500X the best. The 500F was a real nice Street Fighter style that's sort of a mix between the 500X and the CBR with the sports styling. And the CBR is just so much fun to ride. Brilliant fun on these three bikes. And as I say, I don't necessarily have a favorite here, but if you're an A2 rider, or if you're looking to step down to something a bit more sensible, I'd definitely consider one of these. It is worth thinking that even though these are 500cc bikes and you may just completely shoo them away because of that, they have a lot of character and they're so easy to ride. And at no point was I thinking, 
yeah, these are really lacking in power. Sure, they could have more power, but they're not lacking in power whatsoever. The brakes are really nice. The suspension is a really, really good addition to these bikes. And the price is yet to be announced as of filming, but I'm told that they are estimated to be a little bit more expensive than the current generation. So the next question, do you go for a current generation one or this new 2022 year model range? And I genuinely think that these upgrades have brought a lot of character and a lot of finesse that has honed in this 500cc range from Honda. And you've got to give these a test ride, whether it's back to back with the 2021s or just going straight out on one of these. I think the suspension and the brake combination has given a lot of front end feel and you can really start having a great time on the twisty roads, the long distance touring roads, or just the fast and flowing roads. So just to sum it all up for you, the 500F is a brilliant bike that you may even start doing your lessons on and it's just a nice neutral setting for you. So if you're looking for something that's a bit more city slicking and going through the towns and then going a bit of B road scratching, maybe even a bit of touring, it's worth a look. The CBR is basically like a little baby fire blade. It's maybe a quarter of the power and it's maybe a quarter of the size. It's a little bit compact, but I fit on it well as a six foot three rider and had a lot of fun on this one. The 500X looks a bit like the NC750. It's meant to be a sort of adventure crosser. And this is a lot of fun to ride around, I've got to say. If you're looking for something that's gonna be able to go off-road as well as just handle itself on the twisties, this is definitely a consideration, especially for taller riders. My favorite, as I say, I can't really pick between them. I'd probably go for the 500X because it fits me the most, but I would be really considering the 500F. And if I had a spare bit of cash and a bit of space in the garage, I'd absolutely look at the CBR. The NC500, just to round this up as well, what a fantastic road. Scotland has got some absolutely stunning scenery. And if you haven't been, you need to come up here. Literally just book it now. So my name has been Alex. Thank you so much for checking out this Honda NC500 tour. Leave me a comment down below about which one of these three that you'd pick to do the NC500 on. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Ciao.